and then I invited my friend along. So Coco Scones, who is Trevor, who I played with on AVGL, will be hanging out with me. Okay, so Stipen is Which Brandon, Khan is Richard, Ramujo is Rimjob, also known as Riley, Nephiliad is Peter, Max William is Max, or Mac. Um, and then and VX the Shootable, Nathaniel, you know. Dilwad, Griddle. This is the UIUC team over here on Chaos side. Okay, so, oh, I need to move my face cam for P's and B's at least. UIUC is University of Illinois, mm -hmm. ever banishing. Yeah, is that your team? It is the team I am most affiliated with currently. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> bands. We've got Horus Kamazots, uh, or Uller, Kamazots, Horus, Thor, Odin, Yemoja, fair enough. I don't see anything ridiculous. I don't think Odin's a ban in the current meta, but if you're first picking Aphrodite, I guess that makes sense, so fair enough from them. If we see that Odin ban, we might want to think about banning stuff like Afro. But that's that's a future thing. Not every team plays Afro. It's good to get some practice against it, so no downside, in my opinion, P's and B's. Let's see what we pick. Oh yeah, and no hell ban either with that. Yeah, yeah uh... I think I think banning one or both of those is reasonable, but I also think <laughs> it's reasonable to leave them up. Yeah. yeah, I think if you see the Odin, that's the Odin ban. That is, Especially that's... when I think that was like that was first ban. I think was it last? Was it, last ban? it may have been last, in which case we didn't have any information. And it's fine. Okay, so we're hovering Sobek. Sobek's still really good. Um, I don't think that's Richard playing Sobek. I don't think he knows what tanks are. Uh, Brandon Instalox Merlin, which is good. We play this character well. I'd imagine this is Sobek support, but if it goes solo, I won't be too surprised. Be a little weird. I mean, they banned the Uller because they are afraid, and Alex, I'd, I mean, I'd, I don't hate it, right? Like, Uller, Uller's fucking scary sometimes. There's some dudes that can make Uller look sick. Rama, fair enough. This is one of those times where I, I, I wonder if we needed to pick the Merlin, right? If we pick the Rama there, or uh, or a hunter that we want. If we don't play these characters, I know we play bots, um, but bots has fallen out of meta, so fair enough. We didn't consider that super priority. This is kind of a feeler game, maybe. I know we said we played a few games against this team before. Um, so maybe we should have a better knowledge of what they're trying to play. Hachiman's a safe pick. Uh, if we play Rom, Rom's probably higher priority at the moment. If I don't know if he's more powerful significantly, but he's certainly more meta. People are trying to pick him more. Yeah, exactly, Alex. There's more hype around Rama right now than something like a Hachiman. Uh, Jing Wei, curiously, is not present either. Um, so I'm a little curious about that. We Geb. I think people have man. like replaced Jing with Rom, and I don't think that's the right. Like you said, I think it is... Uh, Jingwei's still really good. Yeah, I think Probably Ram is the, the pretty popular thing right now, but I don't think he's that much stronger than he was when he wasn't being played. I think he's significantly, I mean, he's significantly stronger in early lane and this late game's still good. So I, I, I think he's probably top five at the very least, maybe top three. I like their support bands better than ours. We're really scared of a passive support, but they've got an Aphrodite. Um, I'd be more scared of an aggressive support against... Uh, I mean, we we want to be able to go to town, right? We've got a Sobek, which is probably our support pick. We've got a Merlin, Hachiman. So, like, these three characters aren't super aggressive. Our mid game's looking really fire, but we got to get through this early game ROM play... And we'd like to try to punish the Aphrodite. I don't want this Aphrodite to get a red buff ever if we can help it. Uh, that's one of the things, like, Ren when Renegades played Afro against, what was it, uh, was it E United that they beat Afro with? Yeah. I felt like E United really didn't get a chance to punish Ven a lot. And I'm not sure if Afro is just that good, because uh, frankly, I don't play her a lot. So we'll see. We'll see. I love the Pele pick. It's a good Pele pick. Dives well. Deals with Rama Cripple by ignoring it. Um, you kind of have enough sustain to probably stick around when the Rama lands, although probably... I mean, basically, you you can get to the Rama, right? Even if he lands rolls or ults. Uh, you probably can deal with the Aphrodite. This Yorm pick by them is really, really good. 
They're dealing with our Merlin really well here. They can dive the Hachi really well. Gets around Sobek Peel very effectively. But this is a chance. This is a character that we can potentially blow up. So I'd like to see something that can deal with Frontline here out of our solo lane. So basically something that lives a really long time. King Arthur comes to mind. Let's see what they pick. They want what? They're getting a support, probably something aggressive. Uh, what's left? Fafnir's probably really sick for them here. Um, what else is up? I think Fafnir's the right choice. Fafnir's just good, but there's there yeah. might be... Oh, Jingchen? Ymir, a little spicy. I think the wrong choice. I agree. Ymir gets punished very heavily by Sobek. Although you can have some spicy Ymir walls to stop Sobek plucks. So we'll see how, how mechanically insane they are. I was going to say, I'm assuming that's a comfort if you're going into... Uh, from what I hear, we did not win our previous game, so it might be a bit of a troll pick that we just want to own. They just want to own with. Fair. Is Riley even good now? I hear a lot of hype around him. Riley's a good player. Riley, I think... Yeah, I think Riley's a really good player. I'm actually interested to see where he's playing. I think he's probably jungle, but we'll see. Uh, well, okay. I suppose Richard's god pool is either Chalk or Sun Wukong at this point. And of those, I guess I picked the Sun Wukong. Um, against a Yormungandr, I'd have preferred something that kills him more. We're going Sun Wukong, so we're looking to out-rotate him. Probably, which is tough, because Yorm out-rotates a lot of things. So if we go, like, blink movement speed boots, uh, Wukong, and we just try to try to get our power online quick, get get our three core defense items. Um, Richard, if you build Transcendence this game, I will personally skin you alive. It's not a trans game. Don't do it. You are going to get one shot by Hunbot's Rama. Thoughts on... I think one shot by literally everything they have. Yeah, you get one shot by Afro as well. <laughs> and that's that's not a troll. Like, Afro will literally one shot you. What are my thoughts on the Wukong-King Arthur matchup? Um, King Arthur's a better character. Yeah, why would I pick Wukong when <laughs> King Arthur is available? That's my... But if, if the two are in lane against each other, then your, um, your Wukong just tries to rotate early because it clears wave very effectively. Arthur also clears wave pretty effectively and fights better in, in ganks. Wukong gets out more effectively from ganks. So both of them are pretty safe as far as proxying goes. Wukong is just trying to proxy and rotate faster. Makes better use of movement speed boots and no teleport than Arthur does. Arthur is probably forced into beads second relic. So maybe you can get something like a second shell or a thorns or something and be really annoying. So with Wukong, I would just try... I mean, you have you have a tiny bit more active utility, and you have a little bit faster rotations early game. Uh, as far as fighting, you never fight. Like, uh, Arthur will very happily just own your ass the entire time, so... Richard claims that King Arthur loses to Wukong. Richard is wrong. Um, I don't know how else I mean, to like put that. I mean, like, in what sense loses? Like, Wukong yeah. maybe cleared the wave faster? Yeah, Wukong does not win that fight. Maybe? If you, if you, if you, just, so, one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I have eight reasons that King Arthur wins that fight. Um, and the longest cooldown is 20 seconds. <laughs> he says the fight of Wukong is better for the same reason? That just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I agree with Mr. Jauntly, who's... I know who you are, and I don't remember. Um, you're going to have to remind me. Did I have to just count to eight? That is called dramatic effect. Wow! <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I agree. I think... Arthur does pretty much everything that Wukong does better than Wukong does. The only thing that Wukong does better is he is safer in fights because he doesn't need beads and he's got a CC immune ult, yada 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 unless he's standing over a Merlin dinner plate of death. Um, 
that just kills him through his through his cloud. But uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I I don't understand how anybody could think that Wukong beats King Arthur in a fight. I I really don't. And I think like Richard knows knows how to lane. I I just don't understand how he's gonna have that opinion. Okay, I may have to kill the face cam here, depending on. I'll just make me a little bit smaller. There we go. These are some lovely polygons we got out of. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, here we go. Uh, I mean, I don't think I explained it terribly well, Alex. I just, I just think I counted to eight. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't understand how, how he thinks that. I mean, I will, I'd be willing to have a discussion about it, but I think he's wrong. Straight up. Uh, Wukong does clear the wave pretty effectively. Um, and, and just to be clear, the opinions that I'm voicing aren't really mine. I'm pulling them from somewhere. Um, and I'm trying... And the reason I'm not taking a stronger stance on what Wukong does really well is because I pull them from Final Cave. Excuse me, Final Cave videos. So I would want to go back and relook at uh, his his Wukong stuff um, and try to figure because he he explains why he would pick Wukong and how he would use the Wukong when when he when he picked him in a ranked game. Obviously, ranked game very different, but he does talk about it in competitive setting. As Final Case does an excellent job of explaining matchups and explaining how characters work, and then I, I do have a fair amount of experience myself with just you know thinking about how characters work together. Do we start out the game with a pause? Is that life right now? <laughs> Apparently we do. We zoom through it. There we go. All right. So, anyway, moving on, we're looking at the current life of our gamers. No major concerns here. Um, I, I actually really like that we that we do this. We put the hog on the hachi and let the let the support get pots. But this does mean, hey, we've got a aggressive Sobek. Let's be big boy. And go up and we can tank some creeps. We can try to get a first blood. We can play aggressively against the Ymir here in this case, I think. And the Rama. Like, both of them. Both of them we play pretty aggressively against. As far as warding goes, it looks generally fine. No, no major complaints. I'm not even sure if I have any complaints. Let's see. Aphrodite's going to get heal, obviously. The Ymir's going to have hog. So their clear is going to be faster than ours, probably. Uh, but it'd be pretty comparable since we both have hogs, so there shouldn't be any major advantages there. I agree. I think the Wukong v. Yorm will be interesting. Uh, I don't think so at level 1. Sobek is probably going to have heal for safety, and maybe you don't kill him through the shell, but you can poke him a ton. Level 2 definitely goes Sobek Hachi's way. Because uh, you can pl if if the Ymir wins the wave, you double pot pots as the Sobek. You stand in the archers, you tank them, and then you pluck the Ymir. Because he roots himself in all of his abilities, so you can't miss the pluck. It's literally impossible. Even if he freezes, you can usually pluck him before the animation goes off. We lost pressure, which is fine, kind of expected. We're both doing reds here. Afro, of course, doesn't take any damage. Uh, we don't really take any damage there either. Okay, so the problem here is they hit two first. So we're going to die. Um, probably, because we're not going to hit two and we're going to be slowed forever. If you're not going to hit two, you can't walk up to the wave when they're going to hit two. And their clear is much faster than us. We, we literally watched that in the first wave, right? They pushed it to our tower line before it killed anything. Rama rolls in. First blood. We're still not two yet, right? No, so we're both dead? Nope. And that's done. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't know how to fix that. Um, <laughs> if if you, you know you're not Walker. if you know you're not gonna hit two and you know they are because you know how a smite game works. 
uh, you can't walk up to the wave against Ymir unless you're willing to beats it. And the guy who walked up to the wave against Ymir did not have beats. So our unkillable level 1 Sobek died with double pots. I, I don't know, I don't know who, uh... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of rough. Okay, so we're going Soul Eater first. Normally I would hate this, um, but in exactly this matchup, you are literally neither of you going to be fighting. So the Soul Eater is nice for a little bit of sustained extra power. It's not bad for the clear speed, and it keeps you from going transcendent. So really, it's just all wins. Uh, we have Pluck now, so I we can... that last one may be the biggest win. Yeah, it, it really is, because it stops me from getting angry. Okay. So. I'm going to pause here for a second, because I want to talk about something. Uh... Yeah, that's true, he didn't. He's probably going to back and get Blink and Boots if he can. That's that's my guess. But he could also go Teleport. He doesn't need to get a Relic at this point. He's not going Beads. Okay, so we know they have a ton of pressure, right? We know that our wave is at, at Tower Line. If this team were good, they would be invading our purple buff right now. Right? They have the better fight. Um... With, with either their mid laner or their jungler. Either of them could be here. Aphrodite is standing at back camps, right? We are walking out of base. We're double walking out of base. And now the, the game is spectator's bugged, so I have to go here personally. Uh, we're double walking out of base as Merlin Pele. Um, as our purple buff is spawning. If this team were more coordinated, they would already be at this purple buff. It would be dead. And if we decided to show up to it, we would also be dead. But if we back a little earlier, because apparently we didn't get boots to anyway, so what's the point of waiting to back? We could have another person at this purple buff and at least contest it. The way I see it, this purple buff should not exist on our map. Part of this is we don't have... We, we're not tracking their jungle, we're not tracking their mid. And part of this is... So this is a comms thing, right? It's two minutes into the game, you know you're getting out pushed. You don't want to just give up free buffs. So what, what are you going to defend? Your your Wukong's blue buff against the Yorm secure? Or are we going to defend the purple buff? It turns out they're invading neither for some reason. That makes zero sense, but sure... The, the enemy team decides they don't want to invade buffs. We decide we don't want to invade buffs. We at least have to be aware of the fact that they might invade ours. So that that's a problem I have. And this is just, this is something I brought up last time I did this as well. Is when we were getting super outpushed. Right? We were getting super outpushed in duel lane again. We time and time again did not call our jungler to come over and help at our purple buff. We lost our purple buff time and time again. We got like one blue buff for four purples or something ridiculous. So we have to be aware of that sort of stuff. They didn't have eyes on Pele, but we didn't have eyes on either their mid or their jungler. They could have both been there. We don't know. And we don't have deep wards at this point of the game. So we're actually solo <laughs> invading their red buff, which is cheeky, but now we're going to die for it. I don't even know if they had to use Sunbot's Blink. Are we actually... There's no way we're getting out of this, right? He's not 5 and Afro Zoom. Alright, fair enough. Then I have no problems, because it worked. It was sneaky. And I wasn't watching it close enough to see if we had like a timing window, if we saw them on wards or something. Well, we didn't see them on wards, we don't have any. Uh, no, because there's no fucking way. I, I, so I we're going to the same thing. So now we're going to do what they did, except we're going to do it better, because their Aphrodite invaded with no mana. And their bots is still four. Okay. So maybe we should have... Uh, let's, let's go back and look at this again. So we didn't know where bots was, but we're rotating in here. We know where duo is. We think we can get out before they get there. And we're confident in our fight because the Afro has no mana. So fair enough. I'm fine with the invade. Good job. Good recognition of, of their ability to fight. 
Walking up there is a little weird Ymir with the freeze. Classic Ymir. Indeed. Classic me on Ymir. Okay, so this happens. Stop. Who's our target? So there's two targets, right? One of them is Ymir, one is the Aphrodite. Uh, we Sobek knock up the Afro away, which is a little unfortunate. Um, but we probably still have Pluck, so we can go in the Afro here. We're turning on the bots because he's trying to kill our Merlin. But the bots isn't five, and we just watched him use both of his abilities. Right? So how much damage can bots do? Goose Egg. His abilities are down. Bots is not a threat. That's something we have to keep track of, right? We hear, whoosh, and we see the monkey. Bot's no longer spooky. Bot's jump does not do 300 damage. We're safe. He jumps away. Please tell me we heard that, right? Our, our name is Hachiman. We're sitting here. We're, we got our eyes on, Af Aphrodite, or on, the, on this Aphrodite here. The kiss is going through us, so we know somebody's behind us. We just heard a bot's jump behind us. We know his bot's jumps down. We know he's just used all of his abilities to try to kill our Merlin. And, and nobody... We have three ability. Nobody can get to this Aphrodite, right? So if we're if we're commsing here, these guys can all hit Ymir and Hunbots. We know Bots is out of abilities and out of escapes. We have one stun, and we use it on the one the single person that nobody could hit. So a little bit of a misplay. We use the Sobek Pluck super late. I don't understand why we didn't use it earlier. Uh, we already used Tail Flip, so we're not knocking the Ymir out of anything unless we pluck him. We didn't pluck the Ymir. We didn't pluck the Hunmots. It's a bit yikes. They died a tower for it, but I imagine they're extremely satisfied with that. They also got the buff. So, comm stuff, target selection stuff, be aware of abilities, uh, know how many abilities the enemy has. We should be screaming that bots is still four that whole time. Do I prefer Sprint on Sobek because of how many slows the duo has? No, I do not. Uh, Shell is extremely good. Sprint is a kind of conditional active. It's not that great until you upgrade it. We went Teleport and Soul Eater, by the way. Um, and Shell is just generally going to be a better protection lane. If you remember what I mentioned in P's and B's, uh, we're talking about a mid-game kind of fight with this team comp, right? Our Pele is, is good early, but Merlin, Sobek, Hachi, mid-game monsters. So we're really looking to fight a mid-game and win mid-game. We're trying to hold an even early game because they're going to have a ton of duo pressure and our mid probably can't punish the Afro enough. So we're probably looking to win this mid-game. Uh, late game, they probably have us. It's probably pretty close, but I would give it to them most of the time. Um, so we want to win this mid-game. Why am I saying all of that? Okay, something happened. Oh, we got ganked. Did we use our Wukong ult? It was down. So they called the Wukong ult was down, and then they killed us because we don't have boots, and the bots hit five. Uh, okay, so why am I why am I saying no sprint? Because we like mid-game. Shell is really sick in the mid-game. Any kind of uh, just damage stopping abilities is going to be really really good in mid game and uh ymir died to tower uh, and sprint is one of those things that's either a counteractive to a horrific that we expect which could have been possible so for that reason i wouldn't be i would, wouldn't be terrible with it uh but i yeah I, I think shell is just going to get more value here we're trying to stop bots autos we're trying to stop uh rama autos Shell is probably going to give us a little more net value. Extra HP is really good. Block stacks are really good. I don't have a scientific reason for it, but I would probably have gone Shell as well. If I didn't go Blink. And honestly, this might be kind of a Blink game. If I was good at Blink Sobek, which I'm not. <laughs> but if I happened to be a dirty Sobek main, if I was, if I was a dingo dial out here, uh, I'd probably go Blink. So we got punished for our greedy start and our greedy use of our ult. I'm not sure when we ulted. That would be something I would want to go back and look at. Um, I'm not going to in this case because there seems to be a purple buff invade going on. Wow! Who would have thought?
We had a good red buff invade, followed by a bad red buff collapse, followed oh, by that's... more questionable life choices. That is some pathing decision. Perhaps we did not use the shell there, and we accept our fate, and we lose gold for it. I think that might be the play. Yeah, so what happens here? Because this is because this is a major mistake, right? This is a gold fury slash lost mid game equals lost game kind of mistake. Okay, stop. What information do we have? Let's piece it together. We know Ymir is walking this way because we saw him here, right? I think. Let's go back and look at it so to make sure I'm not a liar. Yeah, Hachiman should have seen him. I think so too, over. but I want to be sure. I don't like being a liar. And if I'm going to call people out, I like to have it. For sure. That's their ward. We don't have this warded. Okay. You should have at least seen animations. So we know somebody's invading. We probably know both of them are invading. The Emerald. It. That's questionable. Yeah. Boom. You see yeah, him. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe you see them both? You see them both. Okay. So, what, what are comms looking like? Uh, Ymir Ram just invaded my purple. They're walking back gold down to their purple. They could come mid. Something like that. Ymir walks this way. We don't have any vision here. So part of this problem is we're invading this. We definitely know that their 2v2 is here. Uh, and we have zero vision, and we know that they just invaded our purple buff. Nah, questionable at best. Obviously, they're just going to hit that double freeze all day long. We actually used beads and shell, so it's like triple bad. This is going to lead to a gold fury. There's no way we can test it. They get it. This game's over. I say that because we don't have a better late game. Is anything interesting yeah, that, happening? That, that mid pathing is. Uh, you can't. The only time you can do that is if you just invaded purple buff. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, you have like the pressure there, and you know exactly where that duo is. Uh oh, we got off the horse. Hiding the creeps. Oh wait, you're against Rom. You can't. You're dead. Killing spree. Yeah. It's more pathing decisions, right? We're walked in the purple. He knows he can take the one v one. We know we can't. At least we should know we can't. We're two levels down. Did they just steal that? No, we got it. Big news is, though, gold's down. Like, they only have a 3k lead, which isn't horrible if we had a better late game, but we don't. You'd prefer prot boots on Sobek here. Um, yes, I agree. I would either go prot boots or movement speed boots. Since he's elected to go Gauntlet of Thebes immediately, I would definitely say prot boots. Uh, if he was going to go, like, Onis or maybe, like, a Sovereignty or something, then I'd go movement speed boots. For the MP5. Because even though Sobek ult gives him mana back, it's still really, really good to have MP5. But yeah, in Sobek, I would go tank boots. Plus Sobek passive, that's one of the reasons he's unkillable, right? Yeah, you just, just end up with like 60 right prots for no reason. I mean, the vision isn't great. Um, this is also not great. Okay, so you see the Ymir. Stop, Richard. You see the Ymir. The Yorm is trying to fight you. In what universe does a two-item Jormungandr and a support Ymir with zero damage ever kill you? Why are you fighting them? Run away! That is the most telegraphed gank in the history of telegraphed ganks. At least you still have your ult. Okay, negative things aside, we do have double anti-heal against the Afro, which makes sense. He's going the Ven build, which also makes sense. We're we're like half an item behind in, in duo, which is bad. We're going to lose a tower here, probably, if he wants to go for it. But guess what? 
He's invading purple buff. Also, we died. Unsure at JPEG, we had our beats up and our ult up. They're actually kind of killing themselves to Pyromancer, but they're not very low because they still have Afro ult. Oh. Alright, I guess they don't have Afro ult. Um, well, this fight ain't getting any better. <laughs> That's what for damn sure. Fuck. That was a very questionable what one, Mr. Was... Dillon. <laughs> And then did you see, did you see the fucking bats blink three? You know, into a full HP Merlin. He's gonna kill him, dude. <laughs> He's gonna kill him. That yeah, was... no, that was questionable. Uh, good thought process to go for the steal on those. Yeah, you can't pluck into them. You can't pluck into the Oom Humbots. That's how bad this situation is, right? Um, Riley, I know that Pele really likes Soul Eater. I don't think you get to go it here, uh, which is kind of kind of unfortunate. But I really think you need like just more damage now. I I would just go like Crusher, because your your team's losing the game. You you got you got to plug the holes in the Titanic before you go down, and a Soul Eater unstacked ain't going to do that. Because you ain't getting that thing stacked. This gold's already up. This is now the biggest objective on the map. I don't know why they aren't already grouped doing it. Um, they're probably looking for spikes. So what spikes are they looking for? The Ymir has zero prots and doesn't give a shit. Because we can't kill anything anyway. Um, yeah. And Okay, so we're, we're trying to pressure out the bots. I'm, I like that we're doing something. So that's really good. We got the bots ult. That's good proactive play. We we're kind of just chasing him out. I, I don't know why he panic ulted. I think he was probably fine. So we make a four man grouping here. So we beat them on the rotation. We get the. That was a really good pluck. We got Afro ulti. Uh, Rama comes in and kills us, and Riley dies. Rama continues to kill. So yeah, we get, we get the one kill for three. I like the attempt at a play because I don't think we're getting much better from here on out. Um, but obviously, they, they had a ton of relics. I don't know how Delwad let himself get plucked as an easy beads. Um, I don't know. That That's tough, right? Because you're at a position where you're going to lose the game anyway, so you have to make something happen. I'm okay trying to play into their misplays because that's how bad this game is at this point. If this were an even game and we had an even late game, that play would have been bad because we knew their relics were up and we just dove them into their tier 1 tower. But because we're losing the game right now, without making a miracle happen. I'm kind of okay going for a weird play, trying to catch Dillard out. Didn't work. I don't know. The The more I look at it, the less I like it. But I can see why we made the play. So I'm not going to criticize And I much. think, again, without knowing where Rom is, that's a... Like you said, the trying to force something, because you're fucked if you don't. But... This Rom is the fattest Rom Rom can possibly be, and you had yeah, no idea he's, he's where he fixed. was. Yeah. No vision on the left side of the map. And, and part and of the part of the problem with this is we've just we've given up dual lane, right? It seems like from wave one we just gave up dual lane. We didn't even they were getting out pressure. We're no way getting out the pressure. Ymir's an aggressive character, and we didn't even try to look at our purple buff, and that's scary to me. So we're never killing this guy. We don't have percent health damage at this point. That This man is just thick health. Uh, weird double actives. It's kind of late. Fair enough, we used him. Oh, if this guy kills you, I'm going to laugh so hard. <laughs> That's actually kind of good. That was actually a really good combo from them. Well played. You don't think you have to Ymir ult that freeze there. Or Subic ult that freeze there. It's fair enough. Richard. Pause or frozen? Oh, pause. Because I just looked at what my Sun Wukong is building. I know that we're losing the game. However, the Catechus shield I can live with, the whatever this next thing is, <laughs> no, wrong tree. 
try like Mantle of Discord or something. You have enough damage. You need to live to do damage. You're not one-shotting anything. You're against an Aphrodite composition. And nobody can get actives. You're not one-shotting one anything. a higher level than you. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to leave. Because you're not killing anyone. You can't even one-shot the... You can't even one-shot the... I don't know. Hunbots. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to speed through the rest of this game. Because... I'm pretty sure the rest of it doesn't matter. Because no matter what we're doing wrong now, it's, not gonna uh, <laughs> it's what we did wrong in the first part of the game that matters. Unstoppable. So, I mean, we're going to lose. And they're going to, apparently, they're, they're peeling off the band-aid here. We lost both Phoenix's sub-24 minutes. We lost sub for 24 minutes. We lost both Phoenixes like sub 21 minutes. That's kind of rough. Yeah. So we, I feel like we didn't, we didn't anticipate where we needed to win the game at, or when we needed to win the game at. Um, we didn't help our boned dual lane. We didn't identify that we had a boned dual lane until it was way too boned to be unboned. And I feel like our picks are really passive for how we're playing. And I think to your point too, Illy, the like if you recognize that you've boned yourself in duo lane, but then you try and push on the other side of the map, right? Because that's the thing is that it's not just that they were boned and then they didn't help it. It's not like they traded. We can help dual lane maybe get less boned. Yeah, yeah. We didn't for pressure we didn't, over yeah. in solo. We, we didn't, didn't get any. You didn't get any pressure. Over we didn't get either. pressure in solo. We didn't get pressure in mid. We went for one red buff invade that was a little questionable after their very questionable red buff. Or no, we did a questionable red buff invade that turned out to be pretty good. After which they invaded our red buff and we failed to kill any of them when we probably should have gotten at least a double kill if not a triple kill. And then we inted yeah. on gold side mini harpies because those are valuable uh off of their purple buff invade so we need to be more aware that purple buff is on the map basically <laughs> like we are ignoring our our dual lane to the detriment of the game all right and if that uh and if they get the double kill on when they, the other team, invaded red, if they actually kill the bats and then manage to turn and, you know, touch the Ymir so when he goes and kills himself, he's actually a kill. <laughs> yeah. um, right? Like, <laughs> that, that's, you, actually, you know, that's actually a good point. How the hell didn't we get the Ymir kill? <laughs> they didn't, didn't touch him. They didn't touch him the entire fight. And that's just, that's nuts. Um but right, like, if you get that, you're 2-2, two -two, you're probably evened up. And then maybe when you go and do what you did on their mid-harpies, it's not an int. Like, a, it's like 75% probably still inting. But, like, maybe it's not because, you know, maybe that put the afro back far enough and the bats in the Ymir so they couldn't be at that fight. But yeah, I mean, that, what, one minute, one and a half minutes was essentially, the game was done at that point. Um, perhaps we do not play against Aphrodite in game two. <laughs> that man just had 18k healing. <laughs> That's nuts. I think the sprint should have been a curse donk, but I also think it didn't matter. So I'll leave it yeah. at that. I think you either have to play a more aggressive duo. We need to we or... need to play aggressive because we're not surviving to our and I don't I don't I don't love this team comp either because it feels like there's no direction. It feels whenever I whenever I look at a team comp and I think, well, you need to win in the mid game, but your early game isn't that good. Uh, you, you're probably gonna lose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so, yeah. I feel like we don't have a great late... Like, our late game carry is Merlin Sobek. Right? I think Hachiman is a decent late game. Pele's late game yeah, is, is can be good, uh, but you're not Lazbra. And Sun Wukong's late game is a joke. So... I mean, I don't think anyone any I don't think anyone on the cast side has a better late game than their counterpart. I think arguably Merlin does. Right, I, I think that's the closest one you can have. Yeah. But like the rest of them, I don't I don't really think it's that close. Like again, yeah, I agree. maybe the Palin. Oh wait, no, no, Sobek Sobek isn't play. close. Sobek is oh, way okay, better yeah, than Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I I I forgot they had a mirror that just walked around and killed things. Yeah, Mike says he'd rather have the Afro or the Merlin. I, I think I think at least in that case you could argue well Afro does something so different than Merlin yeah. that it's really not a comparable category. As far because obviously like Afro's not gonna put as much damage as Merlin, but Afro has more utility in some cases, probably, than Merlin, but Merlin might in other cases have more utility. Uh, I think they're two different characters. I don't think you can really compare them. They're both very good late game characters. That's my opinion. Obviously. Yeah, I mean the Rom late game is just. I mean, again, like you said, the Hachiman's not bad, but Rom is just better. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Rom Rom's late game has always been good. His his stem. Yeah. We'll go and look at it real quick. I want to say it's. I I don't even want to guess. 50 percent yeah for five seconds it's really good so if we look at another really good stim character uh, artemis artemis has an extremely good spin stem it's 80 percent uh so 50 percent isn't insane uh but this cooldown 14 seconds what's rama's let's double check it's 11 seconds yeah. so it's up all the time um Astral arrows, of course, are very good. Slows on every auto attack is very good. It's a 10% slow, which isn't crazy, but it stacks up to a 30% slow. You're doing bonus 50 damage per arrow, sure. I mean, and I mean the the ult's just good, right? Look at the look at the top look at the top uh, damage. 540 plus 55%, 70% of that, 85% of that, 100% of that. It's very, very good, notwithstanding the fact that it's just an escape. It's, yeah, it's, it's get a me out super of jail, good wait escape. for my Aphrodite to come and save yeah. my life. If it, I'm even in that situation where I need it. Yeah. Rama's just a good character now, with his early game being buffed so much. 